You're welcome to another content on my channel. This is Hatezio Israel. And I got some very powerful uh, feedback. I was informed to watch my back. And I know you guys are um, told that as well. What does it mean to watch your back? Even though you are very strategic, analytical, and very powerful, you know, people among you have a way of watching your every move and studying you. So anything that you do in this life can be used against you and you can be called out as a liar. So watch your back is a very powerful statement. It's way more powerful, way more potent than be careful out there. When you are told to watch your back, that means you are going to be challenged by a person who kept tabs on you and ready to take your head off your body and remove it off your body. Break you down, hurt your feelings, and utterly destroy you psychologically. So... That means evil is reserved to take you out. Bills is gonna be sky high. And you're gonna be put in a vulnerable position that you cannot get out of. What I have here is on Google that I've uh, asked Google to see what the meaning of watch your back means. It says, well, they saying watch someone's back, but when you have to watch yours, that means you have to be on alert, secured, okay? Because somebody is watching and plotting against you, and they have power. They have political power, and they have LGBT power to, like, really get you killed and targeted, assassinated. So... Watching your back is, is something that we all must do. But for a specific person that's making moves, that's doing big shit, that has the power to communicate, to put a halt on the whole planet Earth, to freeze the world, to be told that, that means you are under surveillance and under attack. And the assignment that you are on is going to be difficult, not by you um, doing the assignment, but the things that get in your way of your growth and your empire that you're trying to build for yourself. Spirits and people are going to get in the way of your success and you must fight and climb that mountain very hard. It's like a 80 year old man climbing a sandbank or a rocky mountain, and he's barefooted. It's like walking up a, sh a mountain filled with shards of glass, poisonous vipers, and it's like you don't have no more strength, no stamina, you know? You are stripped from concentration, your well-being is distorted, but you still fighting to be, to be declared the victor. The battle is not an easy one. And everybody is rooting for your defeat and you got some of them that is rooting for your success and fighting for you. Okay. Let me see your sandbank. That's a sand bank. So a sand is something, if you don't have strength in your body, you will sink. You will break your body up. So let's get to it here. I'm glad we showed what a sand bank. Sand bank look beautiful, but climbing up one, not one that's on flat land, but climbing up a sand bank you are likely to sink and fall down to the ground and bust your ass.
the meaning of watch out. Because I'm not going to waste your time on this. The meaning of watch out is to be vigilant or alert. Don't be caught slipping. Be vigilant. Be on the lookout. You better watch out for. Watch out for that tree. So that means you're going to have people that's going to tell you to relax, calm down. You got this. You know, stop being so paranoid. They will dumb you down. But they don't know what kind of battle you are in. They don't know what your fight is like. They don't know that you got the short end of the stick and you got to work hard to get to where you want to be at. Because it's very easy to waste the rest of your life and give it to a person who's doing better than you. Everybody around you is like, oh, you're just a nigga. You're an ordinary person. They don't see that you're a god. You're, you're selected and chosen to, that can transform their life if they were fell in the right hands. It's, it's curtains. They don't see you as the king of communication. They just see you as a regular black man working a minuscule paying job like they are, like you're a nobody. Or anywhere you go, gas station, oh, that's just a black man. That's just a nigga. That's just garbage. Walking garbage on two legs. Uh, you know, whatever be flowed through a person's mind. Some people's blood pressure go up when, they, when you're around them. Instant hatred. Some cats that you uh, approach, they don't feel like you're approachable. They feel like they have to defend themselves. So sometimes you may approach something or someone that feel like they have to defend themselves even though you don't present no danger. You don't have no guns or any of that. So in the road to success, you will have people watching your every move because they see the aura given to you. They don't, they don't really research. They're lazy. They're fans. They, do not, they don't have leadership in their backbone. In their mind, they're like, you're going to work this piece of shit job and die. And if you don't like it, you are going to be a broke ass nigga. And there ain't shit I can do for you. I don't really give a damn about you. You can take my wisdom with a grain of salt and you on your own. Everybody must live their life. So some people have the short end of the stick and they got to work hard, like me. Some people, they have the ability to manipulate and control <clears throat> that person who hates your guts and who, and who doubts you and don't think you exist. So that's the reason why I break down videos to show you that everybody is different. Everybody have a different path in life and everybody don't relate um, to everybody. Some people can relate to any and everybody, no matter if you like them or not. You know, that's the reason why everybody don't have the same type of lifestyle, the same type of job. But if everybody, if every sign were to work a minuscule paying job that don't appreciate them, some people are going to find something else and become a billionaire in two weeks. Some people, they like, oh, nigga, you on your own. To hell with you. And then they put to shame their haters that have doubt on them and embarrass them because they created to embarrass you and, and let you know, like, hey, man, you could have been on the team, but you doubted me. So... You know, I don't know what the what the God of heaven is, got in store, but I don't know why my spirit is so irritated with my lifestyle. And it forces me to make changes and not be comfortable where I'm at. I don't know why is that why that is. And it's like every 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 time I put my hand to the plow, you get knocked off the horse. You keep on fighting. Some people say, well, you know, it'll all pay off. Some people, it don't pay off. Some people are in the luck of the draw. They, they, they're like playing the lottery and they always losing. You know why the lottery's there? Because you're throwing away free money, hard working money for somebody else to, to be successful. And also millionaires and billionaires, they invest in the lottery too. So don't just think every crackhead in the corner collecting chump change or recycling cans is, is betting on a scratch off ticket. Nah, there are people who are doing fucking better than you and be like, oh, let's give these poor bastards some hope. 
Let's uh, toss in about 20, 30 stacks in there. Let's get their hopes up that they may win that lucky number by playing somebody's pathetic ass birthday. So you got people who invest in a lottery that's doing a billion times better than you, buddy. And they're paid to invest in this lottery so you can put money into it and, and uh, play on your hopes, play on your dreams. Because they know that you, you're not getting far in life. Nobody knows who the fuck you are. You're lame as hell. And nobody knows who you are. They don't give a damn. And you're just a fan. You eat unhealthy. You're miserable. You're unsuccessful with people. You don't know how to communicate. You suck at dates. You suck at sex. All that. They know all that shit. Everybody on this earth is well studied by the elites. You know what I'm saying? And I pretty much got it mapped out, but... Unfortunately, I got to work hard and I have to short end of the stick and my fight ahead is going to be fierce. So my life is like on thin ice. People watch me and they report and they report my every move to the big man. They're like, oh, he's on his phone. I walk up to him and tell him to stop doing that. I'm a snitch. They're not paid to be a snitch, though. They get paid like you do, but, you know, they're like... This dude is fucking irritating me. Every time he talk, I feel like I'm about to blow my fucking brains out. I hope somebody get rid of this dude. Why the fuck he still had his job for? You know, that's, that's how Satan work, man. They hate that a person know how to communicate and they got shit mapped out. So, and also it's, it's a jealousy thing. Sometimes they wish they can do that. You ever think in your head that, man, I bet passing a blunt to this dude might be kind of tight. I wonder if it's like passing a blunt with him and just have a smoking session. They are so fucking frazzled and irritated that they don't even want to pass a blunt. They like, uh, this nigga lame. Nope. Let's get rid of him. I ain't trying to find, how, find out how cool he is. I ain't trying to let him in my life and then everything fuck up and I end up having to break up with my dude and shit and I end up being attracted to him. He gonna fuck up my whole household. So I'm gonna tell you, the devil man is like 10, 10 steps ahead. They know like if you ever give them a chance, a person who know they shit, their life is over. And there ain't nothing they can do to come to return back. Some people, man, it's like when you walk past them, you get a very eerie feeling. You feel very uncomfortable. And it's like, yo, I don't like this guy, man. Every time I walk past him, I feel like I'm at a funeral. This nigga fucking depressing. Hey, you know, that's how, how, um, <clears throat> that's how the children of the lie is, man. Uh, wow. Let's put a happy face on here. Yeah, let's look at this right here. Cause I'm up here yapping, talking. But um, yeah, watch your back, right? Because um, sometimes you ain't even gotta say a word, and they have figured you out. No matter what you do, what you say, you are well studied, well documented. And they know your every move. They know how soft you are. And your, in their head, in their mind, their spirit, you are soft. You are a bitch. You don't deserve to be in my presence. And that's what a lot of people will feel when they are jealous. Is that they try to get rid of your ass. And they can't stand you. Bro, you, you need to shut the fuck up. <laughs> but this is my face right here. Like they say, when man closes a door, God opens another one. And sometimes one chapter has to close for, for another one to open up. And then the devil creeps up on your ass to see if you really doing your job. Like, bruh, I done came to you like 26 or so times. And you on your phone, you're texting, you're not working. You know, I'm sorry, but we got to get rid of you. How'd you know what I was doing? Because you ain't watch your back and you were caught slipping. 
you were caught slipping because you're not supposed to be on your phone. You don't know my life. You don't know that me talking about life is therapeutic. Motherfuckers don't know me. Outside this job, you will get devoured quickly. Not by me, but by the divine being. And you're gonna wish that you heard every word I said and followed along. Because if I stay poor, I stay poor. But if I blow up and become rich, be like, man, I should listen to that guy. I thought he was just an ordinary ass nigga. Found out I was wrong. Oops. Should have supported him. But I went ahead to McDonald's and got me a Big Mac and took a big shit. And looked at him like a pile of shit. Like, yep, that's it. You know, some people, man, I don't know, man. I mean, you just, you support people who don't really give a damn about you. But even those who are successful and rich, they got to watch their back. Like, how many rap artists have died in 2020 and they blamed it on COV-19? Okay. How long have they been in the rap game doing music and they're super young and now they're dead? That's amazing. Just think about the OG rappers. Did they let success get to their head and they're dead now? Or was it jealousy? Did they know some shit and they know how to talk? And they're like, yo, we gotta get rid of this guy. The stuff that he say in the songs makes sense and it has substance. People that were doing better than him and invested in him say, hey bro, talk like this, rap like that. That conscience shit, bro, stop. What do you have to do? Well, I guess people don't want no common sense. Shit, I might as well talk Google Gaga to you dumbass rich motherfuckers. Okay, well, so be it. They like Google Gaga? No common sense? Okay. Give me that Google Gaga cash then. I got that lingo. So now you're in the club. I'm not a club person. But when you go to the club, you're going to hear some music that don't make no fucking sense, but they are paid good money. You know, like when I listen to music, I like to listen to something with substance that makes sense, that is speaking directly to my soul. You niggas, y'all want Google Gaga, dumb talk, with a hot ass beat. I'm not a Google Gaga guy, okay? I, talk, I tell it how it is. Um, <clears throat> but that's how he is, man. A lot of people's brains is mush. Their parents smoke crack or whatever may be the case, and it just lingered into the testicles. Now they're dumb. Anything that sounds right that could be proven, they're like, bruh, you, you crazy. You know, girls out there think it's normal to be carpet munchers, and they're not attracted to men. Well, you have been fed confusion all your damn life and when somebody is trying to represent you and support you and love you they're like bro you lame who the fuck are you where you come from you born and that's the reason why i break down these videos man you got to learn people before you before you like take them serious wife them up and all this extra shit you need to learn who you trying to get yourself attached to and learn them you know what i'm saying we all fall into the hands of the incompatibles, some about them outwardly look good, that attracted you to them, they might have smelled good, they voice sound good, but they weren't good for you. You know what I'm saying? They just were a temporary fix. It wasn't long term. Even people with long term, guess what they have to do? They have to sacrifice their manhood and their womanhood for the D. A lot of people are lazy. They let the media do the talking. They be like, I'm gonna just live my life and die. I'm gonna be a fan and die to help being a leader. That shit is not for me, buddy. That all sound good, but I ain't listening to that. You know, people who talk down to earth and realistic are aliens, they weird. You know what I'm saying? This video ain't gonna get a whole lot of views. It ain't gonna be popular. It ain't gonna be famous. You know what I'm saying? I understand that, but you can't deny that I am not the king of communication. 
and there's many of them out there that can really filter out this ignorance of life that we live. Okay? Because one thing about these successful organizations, man, they had to make sacrifices, major sacrifices to get to where they are. How many times did they have to watch their back to get their stuff up and running, and now they don't have to work a minuscule paying dictatorship type job for the rest of their life around people who just there to get money and go home. That's what they say. Well, a job is just overbroken. You're just, you just there to get your money, leave. But a job, man, it damn near take like 67% of your life. Especially those type of jobs where it's like 12 hour shifts. You work the 12 hour shift for four days straight on your feet. What did you get out of that? You gave it to the man. You gave it to a person that's doing better than you look down on. You don't give a damn at all. And they got the uh, big stick. They got it on and popping. They don't got to worry about the world being political. They ain't got to really research themselves. They ain't really got to read shit. They can kick back at a beach and get like 3,000 blowjobs a day. The best, finest weed, all that. They took well taken care of, man. They can do whatever the hell they want. COVID ain't affecting them. But that afterlife, though, man, that shit don't sound right. Everybody get old. Everybody about to go to the dirt. Nuclear missiles coming. Enjoy your paradise, your heaven, while you have it, though. You don't have to worry about watching your back and people praying on you and hating on you. Your haters is dealt with. You get lawyers. Nigga, your lawyers is, is more than what a damn store make a day. Okay? And you got more than one. You got lawyers for everything, for automotive, for relationships, for false claims and all that. You got lawyers for every damn thing because <clears throat> there are different lawyers that, that, that work. Like somebody hit your car Scratch a car. You about to sue them for probably a million dollars. They better not hit your car. <laughs> they got hell to pay. Shit, I even heard people be suing their parents by giving them birth. That is amazing. You suing two people that enjoyed themselves and brought you here. Wow, amazing. But some people, man, that's why, I, that's why, like, listen, you know, you do whatever the hell you want to do, man. But I don't know who's rising up to the challenge, really calling out shit. And as we speak, as I'm doing this video, I'm being watched and documented. And uh, they don't know my life outside of here. They know it's like a train wreck. They don't really give a damn. Some people do a little bit more than what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to work and do their own fucking job. But some people are bird watchers or whistleblowers. So even though I'm like zoning shelves, doing what I'm supposed to do, I got a cell phone in my hand and I'm talking. They don't see it like, oh, this nigga talking to himself. He weird. Nah, they be like, dude, this dude is on his phone and he's not working. Wow, that is a nice judgment call if you ask me. That is amazing. But just to tell y'all something, man, this all it all depends on God or where He takes this. But this job right here is to show proof. It's like a, it's like a, um, how should I say this? This job is like an ID. It's like identification to show that you got income coming in. And whoever I decide to do business with, like get a car or any of that jazz, they want to see that I'm getting cash legally. Because if I'm successful in my side hustles, you know what I'm saying, and, and all that, they be like, bro, show me proof of income. I need a pay stub. You have to file taxes. You know what I'm saying? The world is like really policed for real. Like you got to really work a job to show that you are a citizen and all this extra shit. You have to literally, literally be under dictators 
who are doing better than you and ready to get rid of you within the quickness. A lot of people don't have to worry about that. A lot of people don't have to stress and watch their back. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't understand how you are preying on somebody and snitching, but yet you struggling too. You probably got like damn near 10 or 15 baby daddies. I don't understand how you got a lot of time to be a snitch. That's amazing. And you work part time. You work two days out the week. This is just an example. I'm not really talking about a specific person, though, but just an example. You got somebody who is like a hell off of Hey Arnold, or you got a dude that, that, got, that acts like a woman and he hates you. Okay, anybody who hates you that got hatred in their heart, they're going to do everything in their power to get rid of you, no matter what job you work. They could be like, well, you've been in that bathroom too long. Uh, you know, you wasn't at your station. You've been gone for like five or 10 minutes. I have to write you up. So you're being policed on the job, monitored, watched. It's like, dude, I'm working. There ain't nobody doing what I'm doing. Some of y'all got lackadaisical positions. So you got people just bird watching, paid to be a snitch. I want that job myself. You got a light, you got a job where you just like doing things like, and all you're doing is just walking around to see if somebody's scratching their fucking head, touching their face, not wearing a mask, and they got to get called into the office. Sir, well, you took off your mask and your nose was exposed. Um, you have dangered the company. Uh, this is not a job for you, so uh, there's the door. You're supposed to have your mask on at all times. So we're not telling you who, who told on you, but you no longer can work here because you don't have a mask on your face. And you put all of your people at risk. I'm like just scratching my head like they, they have this much power over you. And you want to be a snitch in evil times like this? That's amazing. I've got to give you a round of applause for you to have a light job and like really monitor somebody and you get paid the same much as that person do or maybe 50 cents more and you're paid to tell the supervisor that the guy is moving slow, he make excuses and he's not wearing a mask and he doesn't show up to work all the time and he's been calling off why the dude call off? Because you got people breathing down his fucking neck and he can't work in peace. That's the reason why a lot of people quit their job because you got, you know, people preying on them and they can't even work in peace. Like even if they work and you got somebody, some, some creepy ass uh, supervisor walk up to him like, hey man, uh, you ain't supposed to be doing that. Doing what? You ain't telling me what to do when I got on the clock? I don't know what my assigned job is. Especially those who don't even know how to fucking communicate, man. And you have all this expectation. I, like, that don't make sense. Okay, so when a person clocks in, they should be given an assignment. Nine times out of ten, some people don't get, get in a direct assignment. They don't have a, a, a position where they, 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 what they're supposed to do. They don't know their expectation. You just let things ride. And then you've just been monitoring them. And be like, oh, I got gotcha. you. You've been on your phone for a whole year. You called off 20, 30 times. Yep, we got you. We got some dirt on you. Time to go, buddy. And you ain't wear a mask. Wow. You see why people out there selling drugs and trapping and, and all this stuff? You, do, you, do you see why, why, why all this has happened? People decide to be porn stars. Do you see this? Do you see why young girls are like literally flashing their breasts and, and doing sexual favors for money? They don't like to be policed. They don't like you breathing down their damn neck and, and like literally calling them out on all type of shit. So this is the reason why I'm the king of communication, man, because uh, you literally haven't given them the communication of what to do and what's expected of them, and they gotta figure it out. So do you see why there's the sex trafficking is on the rise? 
suicide is at an all-time high, the world don't know how to communicate. They just only know how to dictate and be like, you know what? You're just like everybody else. You are replaceable to hell with you. Bye, have a nice life. Wow. It's amazing. That is truly outstanding. But um, watching your back. Now the person who's watching and plotting against you, do they have to watch their back? When they're ready, they see their, they see they pray. They see that person who's idle, don't know what to do, and they're kind of lost on a job, they're brand new or whatever, or they've been here for some time and Nobody communicating to them. They ain't say not a word to the person that's been here for some years and now this job is gone. Oh, well, you gotta go, sorry. Bruh, you, you up here lurking and just on the side and then you pop out and be like, oh, show disapproval. There he is, there's your guy, he's on his phone. He's scratching his head. He looking at what to do. He don't know what he's doing. He looked at a box of cereal for like three minutes to see where it goes. Up, oh, get him. He don't know where the bleach is supposed to go. He don't know where that toilet paper go. He don't know where the monkey wrench go. You know what you do? You be like, oh, how long you been here? You don't know the store yet? Wow. Okay, we can't use you, man. Where you been at? Oh, your lunch was too long, man. You supposed to been, you, know, you get a 30 minute lunch. You only get a 15 minute break. Where you been? So you gotta ask yourself, is this a person who's concerned or are they like, bro, I'm keeping tabs on you? Amazing. So, uh, yeah. Is there favoritism? Yes. People have showed favoritism to me, so I know exactly what is it, what it's like to be favored more than other people. And I know what it's like to be treated less than the next person. So I know exactly what, what, what it's like to be favored and respected and liked and desired. And a person who just like watching you like, uh, uh, I don't know, like that dude off of Django. This guy. This guy, okay? I ain't talking about him in particular, but the spirit that's in this man, okay? Look at that. You got, you got, this is, this is what you got to put up with when you got the short end of the stick and you broke. Some people do this secretly. You don't even get to see their face. They just send the big man to come and get you and talk to you. And be like, uh, can I speak to you in my office? Uh, you ain't looking too good, man. What, you know, I don't know if that, that is, they make it seem like concern because they don't want to make it seem like, you know, they, they hate you or targeting you. They're paid to act in a professional way like they got concerns, but they don't have concerns. They're actually paid to not make you feel uncomfortable they, they pay to make you feel comfortable and, and, and present themselves like they this, this spectacular, excellent uh, supervisor that making sure everybody is doing their job right. Now, some of them are like that, but you got some of them that know how to play that game real good and they keeping tabs on you. Okay? Like this guy. Okay? I forgot his name, but I just put Samuel Jackson Django. So you got this guy in all shades of color, not just, just a black man. You got him in Asian, Mexican, white, okay, black. All races act like this guy. And they watching your every move. So I'm talking to the people who, who are in a building for like 
14 some hours of the day. Now, if you're an entrepreneur, that type of job ain't for everybody, okay? Where people don't really, you know, like, eh, I don't know about that. And you gotta really sell yourself. Like, I'm not a door-to-door type person. And since I'm not a door-to-door type person, you know, I have to settle for a job that's guaranteed um, money. And an $11 bill can be spent less, I mean, in, in like 11 seconds. $11 is not enough to make sure a bill is paid. That's just over broke. Some jobs is like $8.40. Even with a $20 an hour job, you're, that's, that's gas money. You know what I'm saying? That's literally like, you know, fill up your car. But you have sacrificed like, like damn near 12 hours of your life or 15 bucks an hour. What is 15, you know, minus some of your cut with taxes? What's that gonna do? That's scary though. This world don't make no sense, man. This is like so much you gotta do, so many sacrifices you gotta make just to be successful. And people see you as garbage. So it don't matter which route you choose, whether if you bow, bow down your head and be controlled at a minuscule paying job and you have to work real hard or a job where you are entrepreneur and it's like you ain't making no money doing this and uh, I don't know, it depends on you. But, you know, nobody is going to like, depends on you though. But I, don't, I really haven't met nobody but like, hey, uh, you know, I like the way you talk, man. Uh, you know, you want to be part of the War, or, uh, war Health, Health Organization or um, what they call that thing? Like, you know, you, know, you want to be a billionaire? Because you are good with communication. You know the ins and the outs of the, the, the minds of powerful and minuscule people. You know, we can use a guy like you, you know? You know, I feel like, you know, you being in our team, you are diligent, you're smart, you're a people person, you are very skilled with communication. You know, I think we, should, we need you on our team, man. You like, you really can like get into the minds of these weird organizations. But let me warn you, you know, there are some people who are smart who, par- who practice witchcraft, okay? And, and once you are figured out, that's, that's pretty much it. You know, this is a very dangerous job that we, we are recruiting you for. And you definitely have to watch your back. You definitely have because you're going to have haters. When you are successful, like, like what, did, what did Biggie Small say? He said, more money, more problems. So you know, like the more money you make, the expectations is higher and you got more competitors, competitors breathing down your neck, ready to take you out, ready to blend in and, and fade into your organization and overthrow you. Just look at DJ T for an example. He was the P of the divided states of Babylon, okay? His whole squad turned on him, bro. The ones that had no nuts, no balls, no spectacular fortitude, none of that. He was just a racist dude. They didn't know what he was doing. But just to let you know, when you become a leader, you got people who is ready to take you down, overthrow you, and misinterpret you. Okay, especially if your name is out there, do you really, really want that money? Because the more money is coming with more stress. And when I say stress, I'm talking about people who are praying against you, ready to take you out. They got plush dolls. They brandishing their weapon. You know what I'm saying? They, uh, they, 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 they doing witchcraft to like, you know, make you sick, get a headache. You know, they're doing everything in their power. Uh, when you start something, you can't finish it. Give him a lazy spirit. Do not give him the adrenaline or the push to complete whatever he got in store. Make everybody in the world or whoever you come in contact with be confused. 
So you got people who are praying against your success and your victory. That, that is a such thing as when the devil is literally making you depressed, make it seem like, you know, nothing is paying off. And then you believe into it and then you just give up and then you surrender to a minuscule paying job that's that's quick to get rid of you because you're, you, you're highly watched. So watching your back for very intelligent people is a cakewalk. Watch your back for a dumbass. That's like uh, drinking bleach. They're like, nigga, I ain't listening to that. But anybody who like me, watch your back. The worst push come to shove, I can get pulled to the side and be like, sorry, sir, we got to get rid of you. And they don't give you an explanation. They don't communicate with you. They just watching your every move like this guy, Django. Um, the dude that's head looked like a toilet seat. Like, who that nigga in that nag? That guy. Okay. You got people like him watching your every move, whether if you're rich or you're poor. They watch you go in and out of your house. They, they can set up traps. I'm telling you. Some people are literally, every check they get, they go into a fortune teller hoping that they win you back in their life. You'd be surprised, bro. What the hell is in store for you and what's planted for you? If the devil want to take you out or make life hard for you, he's going to do it. If he want to make it seem like you don't know what the fuck you're talking about and you're lost and you're stupid, okay? He's going to make everybody who you come in contact with believe that shit. You know what I'm saying? So that's what a person who is good at communicating could do. They can interpret the fucked up shit that's going on in his life. And as we speak, I have put my uh, self at risk. You know, somebody may see this video and be like, yo, the dude know exactly what he's talking about. I'm going through this same thing. Some of y'all be like, yeah, he just talking off the ass, man. But I'm about to end this video. Okay. I hope it don't get a copyright strike. I haven't really shared no videos. Just some pictures. But, hey, that's how some people is, man. They hate the fact that you got a protection around you. And they're not too happy about that. They're not too happy that their, their traps or whatever they got going on is, is backfiring on them. Because I know when you plot against somebody who is very powerful and effective, it's, it's deemed and it's ordained for that to happen. Or, you know, you do that to the wrong one. Because last time I checked, I had a dream that he's going to punish everybody who hates me. And that was a message of my dream that those who cause to do harm, it's gonna backfire on them. I don't wanna cause no harm to nobody. Okay, even my worst enemies. I don't, want, I don't want nothing, I don't want nothing to do with their downfall. That's up to the man upstairs. Okay. And I found out this year, or the, the end of last year that Having hatred or anger towards anybody, man. Wow. Like, I literally had to forgive people and move on and avoid them. Because their intentions is just not right. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're they not right at all. And people get mad when I do exactly what they say. They be like, you can go out there and um, if you don't want to wait in line... Um, you know, you can go in a car and chill. I'm like, yeah, I am the type of person that doesn't like to stay in one place long. Like literally this, this ADHD thing ain't no joke. You know what I'm saying? Like me being in line, man, I'm gonna be doing somersaults and turning around like a ballerina. I'm gonna be in my head like, yo, what the, what is going on with this line, bro? What is these cashiers doing? Like for an example, there was a cashier literally flirting with a man that already had a girl by his side. And I'm like, this is the reason why the line is being held up? 
Come on, bro. Get back on your job. Like, I, I can understand that this job is boring and you want to socialize and all that, but that's not the place for that, bro. But, you know, some people are told and trained, hey, uh, you got to get people to buy this card, this debit card. Even people with bad credit suggest to them anyway that they can apply to get 10% off the store. I let them know, like, I'm not interested. I'm not interested. If a person ain't interested, go by all means. But you up here trying to convince and think you can persuade somebody to buy something. Nah. If a person's mind is made up and if you don't have the gift of persuasion, hang it up. Stop. Stop. You don't know how to talk. You don't know how to communicate. If you don't have that gift of gab, just stop it. You don't know what you're doing. Okay? Some people can like literally talk a person into a deal, a silver tongue, could talk you into accepting a deal that you're gonna regret, that you don't have the funds for. Some people can got that gift that you say something or suggest something to them, the way they word it, or, or the, cause life and death isn't the power of the tongue. When your words don't have power, you might as well hang it up. You might as well quit, stop. You're gonna embarrass yourself. You're gonna waste time. So, hope you guys enjoy that. Watch your back. Watch your back. And what does it mean to watch your back? Be paranoid like a little bitch. Turn your head like an owl. And hope to God that you don't get fired for doing something you ain't supposed to be doing. <laughs> Excellent breakdown, right? All right. Like, comment, and subscribe to the video. Please share. Out.